the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it as we worship him especially today. Jesus, your name. Slay 
Sing it, behold the Lamb, behold the Lamb, behold the Lamb, behold the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world for sin.
Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of uh, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. We come to worship you. We come to set our cares, our burdens at the foot of the cross of Jesus. And Father, we come to focus on you. Father, bless our worship today. Revive our hearts. May you be blessed by your sheep worshiping you. And Lord, just uh, do some miraculous things in our midst as we worship you on this special Sunday. And so, Lord, we give you all the praise. Hear our, hear our personal prayers now, Father. And now, Father, here's as we pray the prayer that Christ taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
The scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke, the 23rd chapter, beginning with the 32nd verse. Two other men, both criminals, were also let out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him along with those criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine and vinegar, said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth today. You will be with me in paradise. All those who know that this is the word of God, say amen. Amen and amen. Our purpose is printed in the bulletin, if you'll turn with me. Our, prayer, our prayers today, especially, are with Jan Holt um, and the loss of uh, Jan's father. And so our prayers are with you. He, he was in his... 90s and uh, a loss is always tough on us even though we know where they are we also want to remember to play for carol Wojtas. Um she's been having lots of health problems so we want to continue uh to remember her in our prayers and so um we uh do this sort of welcome don't we a little one haley victoria and um uh, came and we've been praying for her mom and her, Millie's granddaughter, and uh, she delivered this week, right? And uh, 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 a month premature or so, but the baby was four pounds and two ounces and doing fine. Right. Okay, so we want to keep praying to, to remember them So, in our prayers. If you have prayer requests, just call the church office. We're doing the bulletins ahead for the holidays, so um, we may just be able to announce the prayer concern, but event, just call the church office and let us know. Our prayer course is my, Joy of My Desire. Joy of my desire, all consuming fire. You're the Lord of glory, rose of Sharon, rare and sweet. You are now. I will. 
Father and our God, again, we do come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We are blessed to be able to worship you. We're blessed, Father, to have freedom to worship you. We are blessed to be able to meet here in safety and worship you. And so, Father, we come today with hearts of praise and adoration. You are so good to us. Father, we confess our sins. Sometimes we falter. Sometimes we go astray, but Lord, you're, you're always sort of faithful to us. You're always forgiving. You're always patient. You're always loving. And Lord, sometimes it's so easy for us to point out everybody else's sin and failures. But Father, sometimes it's real valuable for us to sit down and reflect, look at our own lives. And then Father, move on closer to you in a deeper relationship. Father, we worship you in spirit and in truth. We can feel your spirit here. We can feel your holy presence in this place, God. We know that you're moving amongst us, Father, and we thank you for that. Lord, we come today with burdens and concerns and oh, just everything. But Father, it is the time to lay it at your feet, to lay it at the foot of the cross. Lord, you know our needs, you know our wants, you know what we especially are thinking and needing of as we pray with you. Lord, we pray that you would do your mighty and powerful thing. Today as we worship, go amongst our rows, speak to hearts, minister to hearts, Father, that we might leave this place so turned on for you. Father, that is our desire. That is our desire. Lord, we are your missionaries, we're your disciples here on earth, and we want to do everything we can, everything that's possible, to bring more people into the kingdom of God. Lord, uh, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for being with Jan Holt, her family, her extended family. Bless them at this time. And Father, no matter when uh, someone's departing hits us, it's really difficult going through grief sometimes. But the blessing is knowing where they are. But Lord, we're, we're still in a special way saddened. Be with John, just help the family. Give them your peace. We pray for Carol, that you be with her as she goes through her health issues. Father, heal her, heal her body, and Father, bring her to wholeness. Father, we thank you so much that as you sometimes call people home, you also send new ones amongst us. We thank you for Haley Victoria. We pray that you would bless her, that you would touch her, that you would heal her, that you would give her weight, and you would bring her to total wholeness. Be with her mom and her family, extended family, Millie. Just bless each and every one of them, Father. And so, Lord, um, we thank you that we know that you're doing that. We know you hear our prayers. God, you are a good God, and we give you all the praise. For it's in Christ's name that we pray, and as people said, amen and amen. We have a special guest with us today. He's not real special because he's been here a lot before, but he's still special, uh, John Eckert. He's, uh, he's coming to share with us, and, but you have to run right after you play, right? Because you're catching a plane to go back to college in Atlanta, and what time's your plane? A two? Okay, so you better play fast. But we will be blessed.
Thank you, sir. If you turn in your bulletin to, to the insert, um, just wanted to share with you as we still cannot forget the Ukrainian and Russian situation. Um, we have on the platform uh, three flags and I uh, just wanted to point that out to you. And of course, the American flag is probably one, one symbol that's recognized across the globe. And so um, we have that displayed. It reminds us of freedom, liberty, and all the possibilities we have as United States citizens. And then next to that, you see the Ukrainian flag, and that is uh, two, two stripes, one blue, symbolic of the blue color of the sky, the streams, and the, and the mountains of Ukraine, and the gold color symbol of uh, the gold uh, fields and uh, wheat and the richness of the earth. And so we have that flag. And then we also have the Russian flag. And the reason that we have that there is that we need to pray for our enemies. Biblically, we are, we are mandated. And uh, we need to pray against evil that's in the world. And um, obviously, we should be praying for Putin's heart, that his heart would be softened or if God has to intervene in any other way to stop this, may it be so. But there's also many Russians that know what they're doing, but there's a lot of innocent victims um, also there that we should not forget because they're most certainly God's children. So we put that flag on, on our, the platform to remind you to be praying. Um, for that situation, it's uh, I haven't been up on it quite as much the last couple of days, um, but I know that Putin said that he doesn't want anything but the eastern part of Ukraine, and then last night that they bombed the western part. So um, we're talking evil, maybe similarly to the evil that came against Jesus Christ when he was crucified on the cross. And yet Jesus Christ proclaimed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We just have to pray and pray and uh, do what we can do as our prayer life. And then since we're so far away, we weren't sure what we could do to actually help at this point. So we decided to have our on the back of the sheet, bakeless uh, bake sale. So you can go to the table in the lobby and you can purchase cookies, cupcakes, fruit pie, cinnamon buns, cake, or cheesecake. Now, I will tell you this, it's a bakeless bake sale. You're not getting these. So don't expect the order to be delivered to your house. You're just like maybe buying cupcakes, maybe buying a fruit pie, adding that up. You're paying at the table, and, um, and then uh, we will give you a Ukrainian flag to take home so you can remember to pray. Um, there's also, we're also accepting checks for the American Bible Society. If you'd like your check to go more toward the Bibles, um, uh, just write the check out to American Bible Society for the, for the cake sale. You write it out to the church, and we're sending all our funds to Samaritan's Purse, where they have hospitals set up, and they're taking care of, um, especially they mentioned widows and children. And um, so you may uh, do that as you leave. We'll be doing that till Easter. So you'll have, have a few weeks, and uh, it will be part of what we can at least do in addition to our prayers. Um, so remember, prayers do change things, and uh, some things obviously need to be changed. It's like really sad. So let's take a moment and pray for the situation there in our prayers. Let us pray.
Our Father and our God, uh, uh, we come on behalf of uh, the unrest, Ukraine. Father, we pray that in a powerful way you would intervene. We know that as we are distressed with killings and murders, you are really distressed because each one of us is your, your child. And so, Father, we just pray that you'd intervene. We pray for Putin. Um, we rebuke Satan, blood of Jesus Christ. And, Lord, we want you to move in a powerful way to help us stop things. Lord, uh, be with those that are suffering today, those that are in pain, those that are hungry. Father, help us not to forget them. So, Lord, use us in any way that you possibly can. Speak to our hearts that we can do what you would want us to do. In Christ's name we pray, and this people said, amen and amen. It's good to see you all in church today. Now we have, um, this week was a tough week for me. I was sort of fine. I was starting to feel bad come Wednesday, just not myself. Thursday I came to work and um, had to go home. Then I had to be taken to emergency. Um, I had such pain in my stomach that brought tears to my eyes. I thought I had food poisoning because that's how it felt because I've had food poisoning before. Um, so I went and um, I had to do a CAT scan and uh, then they had to give me steroids because I'm allergic to the iodine that they put in the CAT scan. So and they gave me intravenous pain medicine, which I really asked if I could take some home, but they weren't doing that. I started to get on a very nice buzz. Um, here they say uh, the stomach flu is going around and it's intense. And there's two phases, you either get it uh, where you have such pain or you get it where you can't stop uh, regurgitating. So I didn't have that problem, but uh, Yvonne who ministered to us, she had it this week. And then um, they sent me home Thursday night and I was so hyped up on these steroids, I couldn't sleep the entire night. I was got two hours sleep, got up, came to work and then I crashed that night. And so I'm just, my stomach's a little shaky today, but I'll be fine. And is, how's your stomach? Okay, <laughs> we're, we're going along together. So if you get something, don't panic, you will survive, okay? They did a COVID test, I've had more COVID tests and I'm fine with that. And uh, so, so we're doing okay, but I appreciate your, your your prayers, um, just something little, but you know, I will tell you the secret. I am really a sissy when it comes to this medical stuff. And I'm still not great with needles, um, but I've adopted over the years. Um, and I always get the medical care that has trouble getting the needle in and taking blood. So we went from one arm to the other arm to the, you know, but the whole time I was there, I was very, very grateful that I live in a land where there's a hospital, where there's care, um, where I can be taken care of. Very thankful. So anyway, here am I, I made it. And it's good to see all of you here with us. And we, we do have a, I would say some sad news. I think um, we might see her at a women's meeting, but um, there's somebody in the church that today is probably their last Sunday. They're moving to Texas. And uh, her name is Donna Sullivan right there, waving at us, um, moving to Texas. You've probably been at New Life. How many years have you been here at New Life? How many? About nine years. We've had great conversation. You've had some health problems, but you're pulling through. And uh, 
she did say to me before church that there's some good things is um, uh, I really liked it. Jesus is going with her and the, and Jesus is also staying here with us. So uh, it will be best and uh, we love you very much and uh, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for life. We thank you for where life takes us here and there. We thank you, Father, for the people that we meet throughout the course of life and, and grow to love deeply. We pray for Donna. We know, Father, that you go ahead of her. You prepare the way for her going, and uh, we pray that you bless her on this exciting new adventure. And uh, just bless her, touch her with her health, heal her body, and Lord, may she be used by you. And may she know that we will miss her here. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Um, why don't we thank her for her testimony to us with an applause. Okay. And everybody else okay? Let's stand and greet each other as we sing, I love you with the love of the Lord. And I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. Did you know that baby Craven is here? You know, uh, Charlotte Craven? Oh, okay. You know, the little girl that's okay. had a leukemia we've been praying for. Oh, yeah. seated it's good to have you we ask that you sign the ritual of christian friendship let us know that you're worshiping with us and um, we've also been praying for uh, charlotte and she had a little setback a few weeks ago but she's with us today and uh how is she doing good. doing good very good very good and so we're going to keep praying and uh, it will be good so it's, it is good to have you worshiping with us. I want to remind you, if you want to place a Easter flower in memory or in honor of a loved one, um, please fill this out. Put it in the offering plate or give it to the office. We're a little limited this year on flower. We have to order the number early, and uh, we, we're not sure of any numbers anymore since the pandemic. We don't know anything. So if you want to get a flower, try to get it in right away. There are some still available. And then we will put it, your name in the booklet on Easter, and then you may take it in the flower home with you and do accordingly. Um, just please note the activities in the life of the church are senior women growing in grace. They're going to be meeting Monday, April 4th, so please um, note that. Um, and uh, our junior high pre-youth are going to the zoo this Saturday, trying to get back in the swing of things. And um, please note, you're welcome to come in the bookstore. This, the store, the gift shop, we're open seven days a week. So come on in and uh, do some purchasing and um, some gift giving that's spiritual as well as uh, secular. So that's available for you. I think the other information is in the bulletin. What do you think? So if it applies, go for it. If it doesn't apply, go for it anyway. Um, but God has been certainly good. Oh, thank you for that hand. Um, we're uh, Tomorrow we begin um, converting the sanctuary into the Holy Land. And so if you can remain after church a little, I, I need all these chairs stacked and the platform cleared down to that corner. 
So all you ladies, we would appreciate your help. But no, anybody that can move, that has a good back, um, if you can grab one or two things, it would really be helpful. And any anybody that wants to help with the set, they, you begin tomorrow then, right? So uh, we can uh, we can we could use your your work and your ministry. God has been good to us, and this time you have the privilege of presenting unto the Heavenly Father his tithes and your offerings. Our Father and our God, thank you for the joy of giving. Thank you for every giver here. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you that we have a, a church and a kingdom that we can give back to you to spread the kingdom. So bless the gift and the giver alike today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise Him, my heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia, alleluia. feel like you want to swing with the choir, you're welcome to do that today. So if you happen to see some words on the screen, you're welcome and happy to join in. So you can let loose, you have permission, and just, just appreciate the ministry.
in the place up a little bit more, don't you think? I think so. You know, when you're up here, it's a whole different picture from worship. And um, I've been reflecting. I've noticed since, uh, now we've split our two services, so there's another 40 or 50 people at the first service. But, um, uh, I noticed since we've come back from the pandemic, um, and it, it may be other places too, not just that, but we're a little more subdued and quiet, and I guess we're reflective maybe, but uh, I wish you'd get with it a little bit more, okay? Because when you're up here, it's scary looking down, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's the Lenten season. We have, I guess, a, Another week till Lent, and then we go into Holy Week, Palm Sunday, and Easter. And, um, and so during this Lenten season, 
we've been looking at the cross, the cross of Christ, and looking at people that are confronted with the cross. And I try to give you a little review each week. If, if you remember, once again, the cross is um, become sort of a beautiful symbol to us, but we sometimes forget the pain and the agony of the cross. I remember uh, I grew up at Trevo's Methodist Church, and uh, uh, Pastor Ron, a few people here have gone there, and uh, we had a big cross up front. And I remember the pastor said to me once, um, someone came in the church and wanted to charge a fee. Uh, the, he was real artistic, and he was going to paint the cross. This is a true story all flowery and bright and, and happy. And uh, I was real proud of the pastor because he said, no, we don't want our cross to look that way. We want our cross to carry some of the message of the suffering and the pain. And uh, so um, the cross remained plain and simple, but proclaimed a message. We talked about, there's many types of crosses, but in biblical days for the sake of simplicity, there was the capital T cross, the small t cross, the perfect plus sign cross, and then the upside down cross. And so you could be uh, hung on the cross on those various uh, different crosses. And we, we said how the crucifixion on the cross was horrible, because it didn't just start on the cross, it started with being stripped naked it then continued with being flogged, your back, your legs, your butt. And then it continued with carrying the crossbar to where the main part of the cross was. And then it inquire, required usually being tied or nails being pierced down here because um, in the palm of your hands, it, they would rip through your hands. And then also on your feet with a little stool um, on the cross so you could push yourself up uh, when you were having trouble breathing. So it was a painful death. Um, could last for days. For the Jew with Jesus, uh, they got permission. They didn't want criminals, Jewish criminals on the cross on the Sabbath. So that's why they took him down uh, right away. But some people hung on the cross for days. Um, two feet, their feet were maybe two feet above the ground because even as they hung on the cross, animals would come and uh, start to eat them. Um, it was a painful, awful death. What was the purpose of the crucifixion? The purpose was, because it was always public, the purpose was to let the general public see how painful it was that they would never want to commit that crime that was done. So it was sort of uh, preventative. So we see the cross, okay? We're confronted with the cross. We've all been confronted with the cross of Christ. But some of the people that we've discussed so far is the first one is Pilate was confronted with the cross. Pilate might not have even been at the cross, but he was the one that ultimately condemned Jesus to to go to the cross. And you remember um, the religious leaders of the day, the Jewish leaders of the day, didn't like Jesus. They were saying he was saying blasphemous things. And so they're the ones that really wanted him crucified. So we remember that he went through a series of trials that lasted how long? We've said this every week, you should resound loudly with 18, okay? Very good. Um, in those 18 hours, he had a group of different trials. How many? Six. Six, very good, that's excellent. And the first three dealt with the religious leaders of the day. Uh, Caiaphas, you, you remember, uh, you remember, um, Annas, you remember the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders, and they said that Jesus was blasphemous and should die. But they could not pronounce 
that death sentence on him only the Roman government could. So they took him to Pilate. And Pilate did not want to deal with him because Pilate knew he was innocent. He was like, what's going on here? So then Pilate referred him to Herod, who was visiting. Herod didn't want anything to do with it either. So Herod sent Jesus back to Pilate. That gets us to six, okay? Pilate didn't know what to do with it, but he had um, the Jewish religious leaders of the day after him. He had... Um, the crowd was after him to do something. His, who else was after him to do something? His wife was after him to do something. Remember, she got that, had that dream and the message. And the scriptures tell us, I think three or four times, that his conscience told him Jesus was not guilty. Jesus was an innocent man. But what could Pilate do? He wanted to keep his job. So Pilate presented Jesus to the people. Do you want me to release on this holiday Barabbas, the criminal, or Jesus of Nazareth? They yelled, Jesus of Nazareth. And Pilate said, okay, I wash my hands to the whole thing, to the cross, to the cross. Now, when Christ got to the cross, there were people there. And we said the other week that one of the outstanding people that were at the cross was Mary, Mary, his mother. Imagine how she felt, heartbroken, sick, weeping. She had to feel that way to see her son half naked on a cross suffering and dying. And so Mary was there and she had some of her friends with her. And then one disciple was with Mary, John, we believe it was. It wasn't named, but we believe it was John. And uh, Jesus looked down at John at John and said, basically, take care, take care of my mother. Tr treat her like she's your mother. And the scriptures say John did take her home. And so here we have a situation where we look at the other disciples. There was 12. G Judas hung himself. John was there. Where is the other 10? Sometimes there's something to be said that people that see the cross, run from the cross. I'm sure they were in bushes somewhere. I'm sure they were watching at some point, but suddenly they disappeared. They disappeared. Here, Jesus, 10 of his best friends, and when he really was in trouble, where'd they go? They were scared. They were upset. They didn't know what to do. They thought he came to set up the kingdom um, to take over the leadership from the Romans, and yet here he was dying. They gave three years of their life for this, for what? It was horrible. It was horrible. So here we have Pilate. He's a mess banning Jesus to death. We have Mary, mother, just so upset. We have her friends crying with her. We have... John, a disciple that was faithful. We have the other faith, uh, disciples that took off. The cross does different things to different people. The cross does different things even like to you and I today in this room. But when we look at it, we are all confronted with the cross. And so we look at two more men today uh, that were confronted with the cross, and we know them to be criminals. Um, the Greek calls them criminals in one place, uh, robbers, they're called highwaymen, bandits. Um, it's thought that these two were probably those type of criminals that met the, you know, the, road, the man on the road to Samaria, this good Samaritan, you remember that? parable, you know, th th what they did, they would beat up visitors, they beat up travelers, they'd take everything they had, they'd leave them for dead. And so it's thought that this might have been the type of crime that these two criminals were there for. So we have Jesus on the cross, and we have a criminal to the right and a criminal to the left. Now set the scene here. The scriptures tell us that Jesus was on the cross 
and the entire scene was filled with mockery. The entire scene, you'll have to, people stood watching the scriptures say, and sneered at him. Religious leaders stood there and mocked him. Here it is, the soldiers came up and mocked him. You know, um, the soldiers were saying, oh, your placard says that you're king of the Jews, then why don't you do something? If you're a big king, why don't you come down? Why don't you save yourself? So the whole scene was absolutely horrible. And so Mary was there, her friends were there, one disciple was there. I'm sure some of the other followers of Jesus were sort of in the background. And uh, here was the crucifixion. Jesus has now been flogged. He's been stripped. He's had to carry his cross. He's had nails put within him. And there he hung among the common thieves of the day. So what happened with these thieves? They were confronted with the cross. They had to do something for their life. Thief number one, I'd say he'd be the one wearing the black hat. And so he was the really bad one. So he started listening to the mockeries of the crowd. And so he says then to Jesus, aren't you the Christ? Save yourself. And by the way, save us while you're doing that. Total disregard for this man to call Jesus the Messiah. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself. Criminal one, really bad attitude, bad God, wasn't accepting of who this Jesus was. But then the second criminal said to criminal one, this is the one with the white hat, says, uh, don't you fear God? Since you're here under the same death sentence, um, we are being justly punished for the deeds we've done, but this man has done nothing wrong. So criminal two now has looked at the situation and he sees Jesus as totally innocent. Totally innocent. Isn't that funny? And Pilate saw Jesus as totally innocent. But you know, you can have someone looking and see innocence and good in things. But once you get the crowd against you and the mob scene, it's hopeless. This criminal says to the other criminal, What's your problem? This man hasn't done anything. We're all here to die. We deserve it. We deserve it. And then the criminal said to Jesus, Jesus, would you remember me when you come into your kingdom? It's a little strange. Well, I've often said this, you know, sometimes Jesus' disciples weren't real intelligent. They spent three years with him. Jesus talks to them about the kingdom, the kingdom of God, and uh, <laughs> they hightail it away because it's not the kingdom that they think it should be. Rome is still in charge. Yet a dirty criminal who's being sentenced to death he gets it. He says, Jesus, remember me when, when you come into your kingdom. So Jesus, when you set your kingdom up, here I am on the cross right next to you. Remember me. The disciples are running because they don't understand what's going on because the, the kingdom isn't being set up like they thought it should be set up. So here we have this criminal that says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, this is a great line. I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. What a great line. Um, 
the darkest of time. I'm sure it was getting darker. The storms were getting to cloud over. The temple curtain was getting ready to be torn in two. And Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Some of you might say, well, is paradise heaven? There's all different explanations, but if you take the general explanation for paradise and heaven, they are the same place. Paradise here is, it's sort of a holding station for the righteous people until, of course, our final judgment. So it's being in the presence of the Lord. And paradise goes back to the garden and Adam and Eve, and it goes back to some other explanations. But basically, Jesus is saying to this criminal, um, yeah, when you leave here, this cross, you're going to be in the presence of God and I will be there with you and it will be paradise. When you're, when you're in the ministry, well, first of all, when you're called to the ministry, God never tells you what that entails because you never go to school, you quit because the things you have to do are, are really crazy. Um, but let me tell you, there is... Um, there are things in the ministry that are tough to do, but there are some things that are so wonderful, I can't even tell you. And probably one of my greatest uh, privileges in the ministry, and I don't mind doing other things. I'll, I'll sweep the floor, run the vacuum, or I'll, I mean, I'll do anything to make it work. Um, but for me, over the 45, six years, um, one of the greatest joys I've had is to be by someone's side while they're leaving, while they're dying. And uh, to be there and to be in their presence and to see them leave the body and to go to the presence of God in a better place. And then to see the calm and peace that comes over them as they do that. It's, it's a privilege to be there when that happens, but let me tell you, it, it is really a great and a wonderful thing that we have as Christians. I tell you the truth, today you'll be with me in paradise. And Jesus was saying to this criminal, hey, bud, you're not alone. Guess what? You and I are going together. How would you like to have Jesus look at you at that moment when you're dying and his presence is there saying, Come on, come on, come on. We're here together. We're in the presence of God. And so this criminal, he believed. He knew about the kingdom. He believed in the Christ, the Messiah. He absolutely believed. The other criminal rejected. So two men both dying, both being crucified, one accepted, one rejected. You know, it's just, it's just the way it is sometimes, isn't it? And so what, what do we learn from um, the scripture? We learn a lot of things. First of all, the text starts out with Jesus praying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do being crucified, the soldiers uh, being killed. And Jesus is hanging there and says, Father, forgive them. Um, that's a real tough thing to do sometimes. You know, sometimes you just don't want to forgive people, do you? And you don't even want God to forgive them sometimes. Did you ever have one of those nasty neighbors? You just didn't care what really happened to them. Did you ever have a, a relative that you didn't really flip over? And it's not that you went to bed every night saying, Father, forgive them, I love them, help me to love them. Um, and I understand, and I'm very sincere in this, so don't send me any letters. I'm very sincere. I know it's tough 
with this Russian thing. I know it's tough for all of us, you know, but Jesus hung on the cross and they asked that his murders be forgiven. And uh, we have to pray. We have to pray. And then as things transpire and if uh, things are handled with criminal war crimes, that's, that would be maybe fine. But we can't become bitter. We can't be filled with hatred. We have to be forgiving people, no matter what happens in any situation in our lives. And it's tough. Certainly know it's tough. But we see in the scripture text that Jesus was so forgiving of what they were doing to him. Um, some days I don't really want to forgive somebody if they've done something to me that's hurt me. But guess what? We read the scriptures and we have to go with the scriptures. So one of the things we learned from this text is how forgiving God was, how forgiving Christ was, how forgiving. But a second thing we see from this text, if you're from the denomination where you have to get saved and baptized to get to heaven, you'll see that that is wrong. We have to get saved to get to heaven. But do you think this criminals were baptized? Our criminal friend? No. It wasn't possible at the time. So sometimes you have to sort of go with the flow. Do I like baptism? I love baptism. I love the public testimony of an immersion. But in this case, it was not possible. Something else we see in this scripture text. Can you be forgiven of any sin or anything you've done wrong? Can you? Yes. Sincere heart, ask for forgiveness, and that is very, very, very special and good. You know what happens, um, the other issue is, can you be forgiven on your deathbed? You know, years ago, I've gotten over this, but years ago, um, I would look at people that looked like they were having fun, and maybe I wasn't having fun at the moment in my position. And so I'd say, well, God, this isn't really fair. You know, they're having all this fun, and I just keep working. And uh, so, like, Maybe I should have waited a little longer to become a believer and had some fun first and then became a believer. Does God forgive us on our deathbed? Oh, yes. Do you think God doesn't rejoice when someone even on their deathbed then accepts, accepts the Lord? Yes. And we have some people that say, oh, well, I'll, I'll do what I want to do and I'll become a Christian later. That's bad. Because you never know when God is going to call us home. So we see here forgiveness oozing out of the cross. We see here the fact that baptism isn't necessary. We also see here in the scripture that good works doesn't get us to heaven. Because what, what good works does that criminal do? So here he was, not baptized not having done any good works because he was dying. Here he was, a deathbed conversion, and he'd be just the typical person, listen to me, that you and I, holy people, would look up and say, oh, he's just saying all that so he can make it. He's not going to make it, you know. It's like, why minister to people in prison? Because they just accept Christ so they can get out on parole. You know, all those skeptical things. Well, everything like that was happening at the moment. And what did Jesus say? Did Jesus say, I don't know whether I believe you. Did Jesus say, I remember when you stole all those things and murdered that man. Um, did Jesus say, well, you haven't done any good works now. You can't even be baptized. So did Jesus say, oh, I don't care what you say. I'm done with you. No, Jesus said, Today, you will be with me 
in paradise. Christians, that's the most exciting thing you could ever have Jesus say to you when you're ready to go. Today, you will be with me in paradise. And, and to have a savior that is willing to go to the cross and die to give us life eternal. What more, tell me, what more could we ask for? And you know what I think is exciting about Jesus? To his dying breath, he, there was still a moment to save another soul and bring them into the kingdom. It's pretty good stuff. But you see, you have two rotten men, criminals, faced with the cross, and the one says, I don't want this. He wanted salvation, but you know what he wanted salvation from? His situation. He wanted salvation. He didn't want salvation spiritual. And then you have the other criminal. And he says, Jesus, remember me when you set up your kingdom. Because you know what? I really want to be part of the kingdom of God. What does he, he, he say to us today? You and I are always faced with the cross of Calvary. You, many of you have made that decision to accept it. That's why you've been here all these years. You, that's why you've been here. Um, today you'll be with me in paradise. And I, I don't quite, quite understand and this has nothing to do with the pandemic. This has been the year after year. I don't quite understand why Christian churches in America every Sunday aren't packed. I don't, I don't get that at all. I don't get that at all. I grew up with a wonderful family. They didn't go to church. I kept asking them to come with me as a little kid. Finally, they came after I got saved in 10th grade, then they got saved. Um, but I can't figure it out. Because right now, Christianity, especially now, is the only good thing going. It's beating the government. It's beating the decisions of the government. It, it's, the only, it's the only thing. It's the only thing of value to us. And as we all get older, you know, someday we're going to be at that point where, where do we go? We have to be prepared. And we prepare by accepting the Christ of the cross. That's how we do it. Um, if, um, if you did something nice for me, I would really like you. I just would, I, you know, if you um, baked me a chocolate cake. Of course, I can't eat it till Easter because of my Lenten thing. But if you baked me a cake, I would like you so much. I mean, if you decided to take me on vacation with you, I would just really like you as long as you were paying for everything. I would really, really like you. Um, if you said, oh, Norman, you've lost so much weight in the last few weeks, I hardly recognize you. I would really like you if you said that to me. If you gave your life for me, if you were willing to hang on a cross so that I could have life eternal, I would really love you. I would really love you. Some of the things I don't understand. But I know when you're confronted with the cross, you need to accept it. You need to love him. And someday they will all be with him in paradise. Filled with the blessing of God.